Continuing with the uh, GIS Canada mapping instructions, the next thing we're going to do is uh, join the table so that we can plot the population and other variables uh, for each province. So here's what it looks like. You'll notice here for the Canada one, if we go to the attribute table, there's the table. There's not much in it. It's got some information that really just tells ArcMap how to map those shapes and the names of the provinces. It doesn't have anything else. In, in theory, you could have all kinds of numbers for each province. And so ArcMap allows you to join tables in, and that makes the information in those tables now mappable. So here's how you do it. We have another table uh, called our analysis. So we need to join our analysis in with this. So again, right click here, and up here it says joins and relates. And you say join. And then you go to your table, to, uh, your folder to find where is that table you want. Here it is. It's called our analysis. So I'm going to add that. And then they have to have matching columns so that it knows what rows to match with what rows. And the columns are called name English in both cases. So the name English column in Canada 1 had uh, British Columbia, Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, etc. And the our analysis table had a column also with provinces um, named properly. And so therefore, it knows how to match it up. So we've done that, and we say yes, it's all good. And now, if I open up that attribute table, I now have some more columns of data that have been joined on. These were not mappable when they were just part of that database, but now they're mappable because they're attached to the file that does have the mapping information in it. <coughs> what does that allow us to do? Just as we change the symbol size on population, we can change other things like the color scheme in Canada 1. So we can go to quantity and we see population. It's now available. It wasn't there before I did the join. And graduated color, similar concept to graduated symbols. I can choose my number of classes and choose my classification. Let's go to four classes. And a color ramp, you should use a color ramp that has different gradations of one color because it's showing one variable, just higher and lower values of it. So cartographically, that's the right principle. You can choose whatever color ramp you want. I'm going to stick with the fairly greenish looking one like that. And I can even hit apply and have a look at it if I want. Yeah, it looks fine. If I didn't like it, go and change it there. Um, I can also divide by, normalization means divide by, that's something we'll worry about another time. So I click OK, and there I've got my uh, population uh, gradation map. So Ontario, as we all know, most densely populated, Quebec, BC, and Alberta next most densely populated, etc.